are you doing? This is Coach Brett, Zen and Yard of Triathlon, and I just got done with an hour run. Running fast, man, out in the cold. It was great. So you gotta excuse the red face and the sweaty shirt, but that's what we do here. So uh, tonight we're gonna talk about the run on an Ironman or half Ironman and uh, how to train for it and how to have some success. So, and how, how to have a great time while you're out there. Let me grab my drink real quick. So, um, there's lots of different ways to train for a, a long run like this. And um, I'm, about, I'm about to tell you about a very controversial one that I've been using for a long time with a huge amount of success. And it's where um, instead of going out on really long runs um, that expose you to a lot of potential for injury and for uh, fueling and hydration problems and um, all kinds of issues, um, there's an alternative method that uh, some very successful ultra runners do. And it's to go out and run one hour at a time, but just do it many, many times. Uh, so, I like to run uh, 50, 50, five zero miles a week. And, um, but to do it, I never run more than an hour at a time. <laughs> You're like, how do you do that? Well, if you run an hour every day, and then one day of the week, uh, you do it twice, like once in the morning and once in the afternoon, then uh, you start approaching about 50 miles. And um, what's nice is every time you leave for on a run, you're properly fueled. Um, you've got the right clothing, the right gear, because you're only gonna be out there for an hour. So there's very little chance uh, for things to go wrong and you minimize the chance, especially for injury, because you never get out there on a three hour run um, where your, your fueling's off and you end up doing something stupid and then twisting your ankle or something like that. So. Um, it is a great way. And then you say, well, but then I never get that, um, that feeling of, you know, mile or of hour three or hour four out on a long run. Ah, you think that, but, but let me tell you that by the eighth run of an hour in a week, by mile 50 in a week of running, you get that feeling in your legs. You set out on your run and your feet hurt, your knees hurt, everything hurts. And then after a while you kind of settle into it and you're all right. But you definitely get that how, that, that question in your mind, like how am I gonna go another minute doing this? This is so painful. Um, but you just get it right at the beginning of a run instead of at three hours into a run. So, um, I, I love it, man, and it's a really great method for people who have kids and full-time jobs and can't be gone from their house a very long time. So the woman that won the Death, the Death Valley Ultra Marathon, it's like 135 miles, bad water. I think it's Pam Reed. Anyway, she trained that way. She's one of the best runners in the world. So um, if she can do it, then you can do it too. So, but the, you can do whatever you want. I'm just saying that that's one of the, one of the great ways, and maybe it fits your schedule, and that's what I do. So, uh, and I think it's great for triathletes because um, you do an hour of this and you do an hour of biking and you do an hour of swimming and, and, and it, it's nice, it all adds up. So I do that and then on the, um, on, the, uh, on the run, on race day itself, I do uh, the run walk. I tend to do a uh, one minute walk, nine minutes run. And what it does is it uses different leg muscles and it gives certain leg muscles a break and you gotta do it right from the beginning. Go Google the Galloway method. That's what it's called. It's named after Galloway, an Olympian runner. And um, you can uh, really have a lot of fun with it. And you've gotta do it some in practice, so it's not new on race day, and it works. So just like on the bike ride of the Iron Baby, where I use different leg muscles by doing different RPMs and different amounts of torque and stuff like that and giving my legs a break, it really works, man. It's cool. So, um, so, I, on race day, I got off the bike and then started to run. And a very smart thing to do is look at your watch and make sure that the pace you are going is not insane, not something that you haven't been doing in training. There are no miracles on race day is a really good saying. So if a lot of people, there's, a, there's an optical illusion. You've been going 20 miles an hour on the bike. And then when you get on the run, um, you feel like you need to go faster or else you aren't going anywhere because you're used to going 20 miles an hour. 
So people start off on the run and they start off way too fast. And um, oh, as far as brick running goes, um, uh, every once in a while after a bike ride, I'll go out and run until it stops hurting. <laughs> That's it. And sometimes it takes 10 minutes, sometimes it takes 20, sometimes it takes five. All you gotta do is just go until it stops hurting and then your brick, your brick run is done. So there's that. So, uh, and the more you do it, the more, uh, you, the less you need to do it after a while. So anyway, um, I started off on the run and um, I looked down and I was averaging a 10 minute mile with my run walk pace and overall a 10 minute mile. That's something I do in training all the time, uh, even fatigue. And I was like, cool. That's nice. But then something happened. Something very dramatic happened. And that's when I realized I was in trouble. <coughs> oh, and I'm watching my heart rate to see what a 10 minute mile feels like. And it was in the uh, low 140s. And heart rate is different on the run than on the bike. You need to be familiar with both of your heart rates. And um, 140 felt okay. And let me show you what happened. I got a graph for you. Okay. Here we are, we're at movescount.com, which is the running, which is the uh, online uh, system where you can upload stuff from your Sunto watch. And so I was wearing a heart rate monitor and we can see here, you know, one, like I said, 144, I'm doing a run walk. You can see the walk breaks, walk, 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 walk. And then about a hundred minutes into it, so about an hour and a half into this, boom, complete failure, right? And there's this other thing, Epoch, which is how much oxygen you're using. Here's me starting out on the run, having a nice time. Bam, like that. Not good. So, <laughs> so um, what this was, uh, I started feeling like, like crap, right? And then we see this peak here towards the end. So what happened was, um, I went out running with about half as much water as I was supposed, as I should have been drinking. I was drinking about half a liter per hour instead of an, a liter per hour. And um, it was about a quart, you know. So the, um, what I noticed here was my stomach started hurting and my energy level started sagging. So what you're looking for, is, but at the same time, I was still trying, I, at, at here, I was trying just as hard as I was trying here. Let's go back to heart rate. So the average on here is a lot lower than up here. So I was trying just as hard here as I was here, yet my speed and my, my heart rate was a lot lower. That meant something was wrong. So um, I experimented with, well, let's try a little bit more fuel. Okay, I took in an extra gel. I felt a very temporary short boost in, in how I felt. I felt a little bit better, but still, oh, and then my stomach started hurting. Well, a symptom of uh, stomach pain is a symptom of too much fuel and not enough water to dilute it. So then after a while I started taking in more water and it took me about this long for of, of overdosing on water for, for me to uh, start feeling better. And then you can start to see it start go right here. And then I, I paused about here for a little bit and then I saved it for the end and then ran the end as fast as I could to try to make up as much time as I could. So this right here uh, the mental aspect of this is uh, not freaking out and being calm and realizing that it's uh, one of two things. Either your fuel is off or your hydration is off. And it took me a little while and um, I figured it out. So uh, the nice thing here is um, that I know that I could probably average this for an entire run. So I probably have another half hour to shave off my Ironman. So I probably have very, very likely have the potential to run an 11, 1130 Ironman instead of a uh, 12 hour flat. So that's cool. That's something to look forward to in a future race. So anyway, run, walk, uh, you uh, hydrate and eat on your walk breaks and then you run the rest. It is a proven method to have uh, a good time out there. And then when things go bad, which they will at some point on your Ironman, you just got to keep your, your, um, your wits about you and start asking questions. Why, why, why don't I feel great? You know, what is the problem? Um, and if you don't feel great out there, then there's something wrong. Especially if you put in all the training that you're supposed to have put into. So I hope that helps everybody with the run. And 
the uh, the next episode we're going to cover nutrition from uh, training all the way from the beginning of the year to um, to race day. Okay, so uh, that's it. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.